Let's have a look at some of the finer points of creating uh, basic text in Photoshop. So, to begin doing text in Photoshop, let's look at the setup that I have here. I've just got two layers. I've got one with an owl object on it, and that's what's on that layer if I toggle on the visibility. And uh, I've got a background layer as well with just a basic solid color in there that matches the owl. So those are the two layers that I have at the moment, and that's my layers window. Now, anytime that I want to add in text to Photoshop, a Photoshop image like this, where I find the text tools, they're all in this area here on my toolbar. So, at the moment I've just got my normal horizontal type tool, which is the basic type of text tool that you'll use, and it's the one that you'll use 90% of the time. There are some other ones here as well, and some ones that kind of mix the text tool with the max tool as well, but that's uh, slightly more advanced than what we're going to do uh, in this tutorial. So I'm just going to pick the basic horizontal type tool, and I'm going to move over. Now there are two ways to put in a new text layer. Uh, and work with them in Photoshop. One is just to come along and point and click where you want the leftmost point of your text to, to be put onto the layer. So I'm just going to click about here and as soon as I click there I can see a flashing cursor pop up on my screen and also I see that a new layer has been put in here in my layers window on Photoshop. Now notice that that type of layer is different than a content layer in Photoshop because I don't see the content that's there anymore, I just see the letter T to show me that this is a text layer. Now I won't go into this too deeply, but the difference between those two types of layers, the text layers are what they call vector layers, uh, whereas these other types of layers are just content layers. And the vector layers just allows us to go in and manipulate the shapes of the characters more easily than it would if they were just a group of pixels like the content layers are. Once I've clicked out on the layer and I see my flashing cursor in the screen in front of me, and it may or may not be as uh, around the same size as what I have in my layer, depending on what my font size is up here. But once I see it there, I just start typing straight away. I can always actually change the, um, the size later on. Um, but as soon as I start typing, I get a whizzy wig of what you see is what you get, gets put on the screen. I'm still in edit mode here, meaning that my cursor is still flashing. I could still start typing new text in there. But at any stage, if I move away from the perimeter of where the text is going to be, I can see my tool automatically changes into this move tool. So I can place the text while I'm editing it, which is quite handy. I can also change the alignment while I'm editing it as well. So you can see there that left aligned, it will put the leftmost character uh, just to the right of the origin of where I clicked. Center aligned would have the origin in the middle, and uh, right aligned is right aligned. Uh, other types of things is there I can do while I'm editing the text is I can click and drag over it, and I can come in here and change the actual size of the text. Now if I drop down this menu, you can see here that I've got a size of 224 points. And I've just got definite kind of size points that I can click on to actually change the size, but lots of them are too small. What I generally tend to do is I like to visualize or see exactly what's happening to my font size uh, as I'm moving through the different uh, sizes in this in this drop down menu. So a handy way to do that is just to double click in a menu and hover my mouse over that menu and then use the mouse wheel on my mouse to grow the text. Just make this center aligned again and I'll go back here and go the text some more and I can see exactly what's happening on the screen screen and therefore I'm not relying very much on the numbers I'm just really looking at how it looks on the screen and I'll judge it by eyeballing it rather than focusing on numbers and guessing one number and then trying again so once I'm happy with the general size that I have that would be fine once I'm finished writing the text and I'm happy with the text that I've written, there are a few different ways that I can actually jump out of the edit mode of text and just apply that text layer and move on to other layers. Uh, one way is on this text menu for the text tool, right over here I've got two different options. Uh, the first one says cancel any current edits, which will just jump out of the layer and just leave it to the way that it was before I started editing. And the second one, this little tick icon, commit any current edits. So if I click on that, that will automatically apply the layer and it will leave the layer selected, but I'm not in edit mode anymore. Uh, once I've deselected or I'm out of the edit mode, I'm still on this text layer, I can just move back in with my text tool, get rather close to the edge of my text and click 
and I can edit it again. And yet again, once I go back into the edit mode, I get those two icons back again. Another way to jump out of the edit mode of a text layer is just go to go command and enter on your Mac or control and enter on your PC. It's the same thing as clicking on the tick on the menu bar. It's just a keyboard shortcut. And then the third way to move away is just to click on another layer. Any of those three methods will jump you out of the edit mode and then you can continue on working with whatever else you want to do. Let's go back into edit mode again. I'm just going to take my text tool, and this sometimes takes a little bit of getting used to. Uh, if I try and select away from the text, and I try and come in with my text tool, and let's say click where my cursor is here, uh, and try and click and select, I'm actually just going to get a new text layer, which is just going to pop up there, which isn't exactly what I want. So instead of doing that, uh, I'm just going to get right in next to the the final character in the piece of text that I want to select. Get very, very close. Then you can be uh, pretty much certain that you're going to click and drag and put the, the text layer that's already in existence, put that into edit mode, and then you can edit it whichever way you want. Let's run through some of these other different fine-tuning instruments that I have on the text menu, uh, rather than just the size. Uh, obvious ones here is uh, the font face. So at the moment I'm using this Abad EMT condensed uh, font face. If I drop down that menu, I can see all the different names of the font faces, and I can also see, also see little samples. And I can jump down here, look at the different samples. If I know my font faces very well and I just want one particular font face, uh, I can just find it and apply it by clicking on it and so on. And again, the same type of trick if I want to scroll down through my font faces using my mouse wheel on my, on my mouse. If I just double click into that drop down menu, when it goes blue to select it, then I can actually scroll through them with my mouse. And if I'm just looking for or browsing through the different font faces. That's an easy way to do it. And find one that I like. And so on. Uh, I'm just going to find a very big and thick kind of font face that will look good for some of the other different tools I'm going to use. Uh, impact is good wide letters, so I'll leave it like that. Uh, Different font faces might have different stylings attached to them, but you're not guaranteed of it. So for instance, a particular font face might have an italic version of it, or a bold version of it, and depending on what font face I've chosen, I can just drop that down and apply a bold or an italic font face. Just in this case, Impact doesn't have either of those, so I'll move on. I'm going to move over here to the colors of the font face, so that's this little uh, colored box here. And it's separate from the actual foreground and background color here that's applied to other tools in Photoshop. But if I would just want to change the color of my text, it's very easy to do that. Once I click on that, I just get my color picker or my color palette. And it just works the same way as any of the other different color palettes that we've used. And also when you're dealing with text, it's quite nice to just jump out here with a, an eyedropper tool that will soak up any particular color that I hover over. And that will bring that color in as my text color if I want. That's quite useful. But for the moment, I'll just go for a white. Uh, it's fine for the moment. Now the tool just next to that, just next to my color tool, is just Create Warp Text Tool. So once I click on that, it opens up a new dialog box. And uh, I've got different settings here that are grouped together in kind of nice little names that I can apply to the text that I've selected. And it will do different types of variations of the text, make wavy type of features and, and effects on the text. And when you see this, first of all, you think this is amazing that you'll use it quite a lot, but in actual fact, it's not hugely useful. It comes in useful just very in a very seldom way. Um, all of those drop-down uh, options that I have, they're just combinations of different variations of these three different slider bars. So if I want to fine-tune or just create any of my own different features, I can do that just by sliding those different slider bars. And click OK to apply. And again, 
even when I move off that text layer, I can always come back to it. It is still text that is selectable, and I can still change the text, move it around, and I can still warp it in different ways as well if I want to do that again. Uh, for the moment, though, I'm just going to leave it without any warping at all and put it back to normal. Finally, the last dialog box that I have on this text to menu bar, it says toggle the character and paragraph panels when I hover over it. Uh, what this essentially is, it's an exact copy of this character panel here that's usually placed in this panel dock just above the layers panel, but depending on what type of uh, different view that you're working on, it may not be there. So clicking on this toggles it on and off. So let's look at this character panel and see what's available to us. A lot of the same type of tools that I see on my menu bar are here again. They're effectively the same too. If I drop this down, for instance, I see all my different font faces my styling, my sizes, but there are a few extra ones as well that are very useful in different ways. So, stepping through them one at a time. So firstly, if we focus on uh, this tool here, which is just to do with the leading uh, between the different lines of text. So leading is just the spacing between text and text that's above that text. Uh, and I won't try that out here because I have only one line of text, but you can try it out on your own and it's very obvious of what it does if I've got more than one line of text. The next option down here, well, I've got two together. I've got kerning and tracking, which uh, kind of go in tandem with one another. And to explain these, the tracking and the kerning are all to do with the spaces between the actual individual characters of text. I generally would focus on tracking, first of all, because it's more powerful. So I have a drop-down menu here, and I can go minus 75. You can see that pulls it together more. Minus 50, and minus 10, and... Uh, if I put it back to zero, it's just got the default tracking of that particular font face. Kerning is more specific with just individual characters of text. Now, if I had just space between two characters of text that I was particularly worried about, I generally select those two pieces of text, and I could change just the kerning between those two different characters. And with the kerning tool in Photoshop, generally, I just get my mouse and I click into the space between them and I can affect that space, that individual space, and I can move it closer together uh, or I can set it further apart. So tracking is generally an overview of a particular line of text. It changes a group of uh, text letters in one line and it changes the tracking uh, consistently between all the different characters, whereas kerning is to do with individual spaces. But generally, they go hand in hand. Uh, moving down here, we've got text height and uh, we've got the horizontal scale as well. Uh, both of these are very useful if I want to just slightly stretch out or uh, squeeze different text either in the vertical scale or the horizontal scale, especially if I want to align them in or fit them into a particular box, uh, the same as another piece of text that might be above or below that text. So that's quite useful. And to give you an example, I'm just going to select my text there and let's stretch it out more than 100%. I'm going to scroll that up with my mouse wheel. And I can also vertically scale up or down. So generally you should kind of use these as fine tuning tools. Uh, if I wanted just a bigger font face, for example, the most obvious way to do that is just to change the font size rather than using the vertical scale and horizontal scales to do that. So I'm just going to set my vertical scale back to 100 and my horizontal scale back to 100 as well, just to make it normal again. And lastly, on this character panel, I've just got uh, the baseline shift. So the baseline shift, again, we'll see it uh, most obviously if I had multiple lines of text. But if I just double click in there and I can actually scroll up, it will move it from the baseline. That is the baseline of that particular line that I'm dealing with. So I'll see it move away from the text. But again, I'll set that back to zero. Moving down the bottom of this uh, character panel, looking at some of these different icons. Well, I've got different options here. Uh, this one here is just full bold. So for example, I said that a lot of these font faces didn't come with bold or italic versions of that font face. But if I want to force it to have some sort of bold, Photoshop will actually do that for me just takes a generic formula and just applies that formula across a piece of text and I'll get some sort of bolding on it. Uh, it's the same for faux italic. It will force it to have some sort of italics. Uh, but again, it's just an algorithm that Photoshop uses. Uh, I've got uh, all caps, which will change the whole text into uh, uppercase letters. Uh, small caps, which will have 
the uppercase letters remain uppercase, but just change the lowercase letters to uh, smaller versions of the uppercase. And then I've got some other superscript and subscript options here. But generally that's the character panels, and that's text in Photoshop.